Good evening. Welcome to Falls from Iron. Welcome to our post-match debrief for the match that took place yesterday evening at the London Stadium in the Europa League Group H. Match day two of six. It was West Ham United two, rapid Vienna nil. They were really static Vienna in my view. They they weren't rapid at all. Um, didn't really trouble us. I mean, to be fair, I think if we'd have had our shooting boots on, it would have been a little bit more convincing than that. But we'll get into that shortly. Um, for those of you watching either live or at your own leisure, please don't forget to drop a like on the stream. It really does help the channel out tremendously. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure you hit that bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel, such as this. Um, Steve has just jumped into the live chat. Hope you're well, mate. Well, I know you're not, actually. Um, I, I, I say that standard, hope you're well. And then I, as the words left my mouth, I realized, no, you sent me a message earlier and said that you're not well. So get well soon, my friend. OK, so let's let's get into it. So um, yesterday, the match that took place at London Stadium, I'll just get this up on the screen. I'll go full screen with it. Um, get rid of that banner. There we go. So that was the starting lineup that was presented to the referee at 7 p.m. and was announced to the outside world. It was Ariola in goal making only his second appearance in Claret and Blue. Or actually, I think he was wearing uh, was he, was he wearing greeny or blue? Whatever. He wasn't wearing claret and blue, obviously, because he's the goalkeeper. Anyway, there you go. Um, back four from left to right. Aaron Cresswell started. And we had Issa Diop and Craig Dawson as the central pair with Ben Johnson in his favoured position of right fullback. Obviously, he's been used quite a lot of left back because Vladimir Tufau has been in such brilliant form. But... Vladimir Tufel was given the night off and in came young Ben Johnson. Um, the two defensive midfielders, um, although I maintain that Declan Rice now is is not a defensive midfielder, he's now the complete midfielder, but he's, his starting position is a little bit deeper than everybody else, so fair enough. Um, Declan Rice and incoming alongside him, Thomas Socek was given... Um, and well, not the night off because he came on as a sub later. Um, but Mark Noble started, he had the armband. Um, Kent's just told me, yes, he was, he was wearing dark blue. Cheers, Kent. No, I knew, I knew you'd, you'd come good for me, mate. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for digging me out. I've, I was racking my brains, I was trying to think, what was he wearing? Because I think the other goalkeeper was wearing yellow, wasn't he? And I was thinking, was he wearing blue? Was he wearing green? I can't remember, but you've put me right there, mate. I do appreciate that. Um, so yeah, so Declan Rice and Mark Noble were the holding midfielders. We then go to the offensive midfield three. Saeed Ben Rama was deployed wide left, Andre Yarmolenko wide right. And Nikola Vlasic was in the number 10 position. Mikhail Antonio started, much to my surprise. I, I thought it would be anyone but. I thought, and not because of his ability, not because of his performances. I just thought that fundamentally David Moyes would use last night to give him a little bit of the night off. Everybody said that this was going to be our easiest game on paper. So, it, you know, it, it kind of made sense that he was going to rest him, but he didn't. He, he resisted the temptation and our main striking option played in the number 10, uh, the number nine role. And uh, we then come to uh, the rapid or static Vienna team, as you will. Not an awful lot of names there that I'm familiar, with, except for one, their central defender, number six, Kevin Vimmer. Now, if that name rings a bell to you, it should, because he used to ply his trade for Tottenham. Um, not for long. I mean, I think he, I looked it up. He had 15 league games for them in about a season or two. He was there. He was, he was obviously in the pecking order. He was a little bit low down behind, uh, Jan Fatongan and uh, Toby out of Um, so he didn't get much game time. He soon cleared off to Stoke. He didn't really get too much more game time there. And then he was back off to Austria. Um, the rest of the names there. Sorry, I am not an expert in Austrian football. Don't really know them, so we move on. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Tottenham rejects and a Stokey. Not much more you can say about that, is there, Kent? But um, yeah, so that was the, the rapid Vienna starting lineup. And if you want it, there were the substitutes. Um, Fabianski, Zuma, Fournals, Lanzini, Bowen, Ogbonna, Masuaku, Socek, Kral, Randolph, Alesse and Baptiste. 
and I'm back in the room. OK, I mean, so we we started the match well. We, we got to about eight minutes in and Declan Rice had an opportunity. Um, Aaron Cresswell fires in a ball towards goal. Declan Rice gets up, gets his head to it. It's goal bound. And you, you, I, I was out of my seat. To be honest, I was out of my seat all night. But, you know, shh. Um, I'm right at the back. I'm not in anyone's way. So it's not like anyone behind me is going to be complaining. There's no one behind me. Anyway, so Declan Rice rises like a salmon, gets his head to this pinpoint cross. It's goal bound. You're thinking, oh, it ends up, it's a goal. It hits the post and comes away. Diop goes flying in, but he couldn't get there. And the ball was cleared. Um, 27 minutes in. We have another opportunity. Again, the woodwork is the difference between us going 1-0 up and not. Cresswell fires in a ball. Again, beautiful ball played in. And this time, Craig Dawson gets up. He gets his head to it, hits the post again and cleared. And you're like, oh, my goodness. Is it going to be one of those nights? But two minutes later, Declan Rice, the main man, the heartbeat of the team, Obviously not the captain last night when Mark Noble was on the pitch, which he obviously was when he put the ball in the back of the net. But so the balls played. I believe it was Saeed Benrahma had the ball. I'm fairly sure it was. Played the ball into Andre Yarmolenko, who shaped up, played a nice little lofted pass through to Mikhail Antonio, who was just slightly to the left of goal. He's through. He cuts the ball back. Who's who's running in at the back at the back post? It's the main man. It's Declan Rice. Fires it calmly past the goalkeeper, and London Stadium jumping about it went absolutely mental. Sadly, at that precise moment in time, it kicked off a little bit in the in the corner as well behind that particular goal. I I'm up in the gods as I say, um, and it's it was all sort of like to my right, and I'm like, what's going on there? And the stewards went piling in. And yeah, um, Walshy, hope you're well, mate. Thanks for coming. Do appreciate your time um, and contribution. And uh, Kent's just saying there, I thought we was in cruise control last night. Could have gone up three levels. Didn't need to, Kent. Didn't need to. We we did what we needed to do. Um, you know, we, we, we probably did have a couple more gears to hit if we really needed to. Didn't need to. They were, they were probably, as far as the team's concerned, they're probably championship level, in my opinion. Um, there or thereabouts. So we're one nil up, 29 minutes gone. Um, there wasn't really too much more that happened between then and the uh, halftime whistle. <coughs> Do excuse me. Um, second half starts. There's a couple of yellow cards, substitutions, this, that and the other. And to be honest, not an awful lot happened until in the 70th minute, and again, I'm so far away. I couldn't, it wasn't one that I could look at from that distance and go yes or no. But a penalty was awarded. The on field official points to the spot, blows his whistle, says that's a penalty. Ben Johnson goes in for a tackle with a player called Gruel. He goes down, gives the penalty. The bit of a com- confrontation, a consultation, whatever, discussion. Obviously, the VAR must have been in the referee's ear. He's obviously looked at it and said, I think you might want to look at this because I'm not too sure that there's been any contact here, actually. As soon as, as soon as the referee started making the move to the to the television monitor that's that's on the side of the pitch, I pretty much knew that the smart money was being on the, the on-field decision was going to be overturned because I've done about you. Pretty much every time that I've seen the on-field official going to that monitor, More often than not, the on-field decision is about to be overturned. So obviously, penalty was the on-field decision. I'm sitting there thinking that's going to be overturned. So it proved. Now, obviously, I couldn't see the challenge until much later. I've seen it since. There was no challenge. (laughs) There was no contact. Ben Johnson's obviously made, made a go for the ball. He's not made contact with the player in any way, shape or form. It's. It was never a penalty. Never, never a penalty. Um, and quite rightly, VAR has got involved. The pe- referee has looked at it. And that's the thing for me. I mean, for me, the thing that kind of frustrated me with VAR is when it was the VAR official making the decision. No, that's not a penalty. Yes, it is a penalty. For me, 
the VAR should be there to say, mm, I think you might want to look at this because I'm looking at this and I don't think it is. If the on-field on official goes, has a look and makes that decision, whether I agree with it or not, for me, that has to be the way to go. So there you go. So the on-field decision was overturned, no penalty, and you breathe a sigh of relief. Because to be honest with you, up until that point, Rapid Vienna had offered pretty much nothing as an offensive force. Ariola was pretty much a bystander. He could, you, you might as well have put David Martin in goal. You might as well have put in, I don't know, my French bulldog. You know, she would, she would have been just as good. And that's no slight on Ariola, but fundamentally he had nothing to do. So there you go. You could have put anyone in goal. Um, as I say, substitutions, a couple of yellow cards. I, I actually found Rapid Vienna, you know, they were pulling shirts. They were sort of, you know, being quite cynical in places. Typical sort of continental team. We get to the 81st minute, nine minutes from the game hitting the 90 minute mark. Um, beautiful, beautiful through ball. I saw it obviously in real time. It happened right in front of me and, and sort of like I, I thought, wow, that was a great pass. Seen it since on the replay. My goodness. Pablo for nows. What a ball he played through for Jared Bowen. Now, Jared Bowen, it has to be said has been one of our better players this season. So four nows is sort of like left of, of the pitch. He plays this ball through, you know, a couple of players, bisects them, just just surgical, absolute, just surgical precision. Bowen runs onto it, swivels, gets past the goalkeeper. And watching it back, I sort of look, as soon as he's, before he's even made contact with the ball, I'm, I'm sort of watching it in slow motion. And I'm like, I know he, I know he misses, but you can see from his body shape, he's going to put it over because he's just, he's leaning back. You're like, that is going over before he's even made contact with the ball. Um, I think he probably should have done. Well, no, I, I'm scrubbed that. He should have done better. No ifs, no buts. He's been fantastic for us this season, but he has to take responsibility. That should have been 2-0. Now, if, if they'd have come back and scored an equaliser after that, oh, mate, he'd have been absolutely, I think Moisey would have been tearing him a new one. But fortunately, we sort of, we get forwards. We're 90 plus three minutes into the game now. So there was five minutes of additional time that the, the referee's assistant put up. Three minutes in, um, the goalkeeper, Gartler, makes a save. Um, I thought it was Ben Rama when it actually happened, but I found out latterly it was actually four nows. Um, but he was played through. It was a neat one-two with Ben Rama. So that's probably why I initially got confused and thought it was Ben Rama that had the shot. But it was actually four nows. Fires this ball in and the goalkeeper's diving to his right, puts it away, um, corner, and, you know, not an awful lot happened there. However, two minutes after that, game was over as a contest if it was ever still alive at that point to be honest because as I say static Vienna offered not an awful lot they really didn't um Ben Rama on the left hand side was played in by Bowen um takes a touch and then just didn't sort of hit it with an awful lot of power but didn't need to it was the precision and it's sort of like he's bent it around the defender so that the goalkeeper probably didn't see it till quite late but yeah, it was straight into that bottom corner. Such precision. Ben Rama had an absolutely majestic game, in my view. Absolutely majestic. He was... Um, and, and yet, the thing is, he probably still wasn't man of the match. I, I personally think that the man of the match was Declan Rice. I, I, I think that Declan Rice just shades it from Ben Rama. But Ben Rama was magnificent. Seriously, he was really magnificent. Um, just going to have a look at the comments now, just to see... Um, I've just sort of obviously gone through my synopsis of the match. So let's see what you've come in with. Um, well, she, as soon as it happened, the TV replays were being shown and we knew it wasn't a penalty. The VAR check started. Yeah. I mean, like I say, every time that a referee goes over um, to have a look, I'm just like, it's, it's you know, that on-field decision is almost certainly going to be overturned. Mike, glad to, glad to see you there, mate. Thanks for thanks for dropping in. Um, glad ben, ben Johnson got that overturned. That's what VAR is for. Absolutely. And I said right from the very get-go, actually, um, that VAR was something that when it came in, going to be something that would take a little bit of time. Don't forget, sports like rugby league, rugby union, cricket, tennis have been using video technology for 20 years in some cases. And it isn't perfect there, 
So why did we think that it was going to be perfect in the first season, two seasons? Now, I know, obviously, the, I think the thing that pisses people off is is the, the, the offside. You know, oh, he was a toenail offside. That's completely ridiculous. But VAR, for me, you had to bring it in football because of the finances that were involved. And, you know, um, to have the technology there and it not be used in a, in a sport like football, it made no sense. Duke, how are you, sir? Very well, buddy. Yourself. Sorry I'm late. Um, as I explained to you moments ago, well, it feels like moments ago, <laughs> um, it's, it's all fun and games. Um, it is what it is. I've, I've, I'm, I'm here now. That's all that matters. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, just a quick one. Good evening, Andy. Oh, Good man. evening, Andy. We, uh, I'll tell you what, just, just agreeing with the other guys in the... Uh, in the chat, mm-hmm. that's very, that is very sheer, bro. Like that, so? that's, that's a, that's a my look normally. I, I go, I go. Yeah, I go, yeah but you know, I let it grow and then I get it all off. You know that's my. Yeah, but it's, around, it's right? not a look. It's listen. It's not a look for you, older gentleman. I mean, you're going to get there naturally pretty soon, anyway, sir. So you need to slow down. Sorry, what was that? I, I didn't catch that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, your thoughts on the match, Duke? I've given a synopsis. I don't know how much of it you caught um, of of the match to the to the viewing public. Um, but what was your opinions of what you saw? To be honest, mate, I, I literally that um, I, I came on and that was that was where I was at. Um, to be honest with you, um, I, I've got to say, I, uh, again, I, I don't want to step on your toes with what you've already said, what you haven't. But no. eighteen months. Maybe two years ago, we lose that game. Um, we we at points we looked shaky. Uh, I've got to say, we looked. It, it was a concern at points, just because um, we, we we kind of the old school West Ham. We we kind of went one nil up, and then for some reason we wanted to defend again. And I'm not quite sure where where that mentality came into it last night. You know, hmm. um, but. That being said, let's that, let's come away from the negatives um, because we've had enough of those. Evening, Luke. Uh, we've had enough of those. We've had enough of the negativity over the last, you know, eight nine years. I, and I want to I, I want to stick with the positivity. I want I want that 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 great team feeling, the camaraderie that all us fans have, the players have. The, you know the, the management team, the backroom staff. We all look. It's, it, you know, it's, it's a tight knit group now. There, there doesn't seem to be much infighting. So, you know, I'm I'm just there with regards to you know I'm I'm happy. Um, I thought it was a, it wasn't the most polished performance, but it was a very workmanlike performance. We came it out on top. Controlled, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Well, I say controlled. There were there were points where I I shit myself slightly. Um, I just. You know, we we kind of invited them, but in the end, it played into ha- into our hands because, um, um, although I was screaming at the TV uh, for for Ben Rama, um, called him a few names as to why have you intercepted that? That was four nails rolled out your feet and ping one, son. Um, it turned out all right, didn't it? Let's be mm. honest, it was a, a very well taken goal. I feel. He, you know, he, he sized it up. But the second he kind of came back onto that right boot, he knew what he was doing with that ball. Oh, he knew yeah. where he wanted to put it. Goalkeeper's, uh, goalkeeper's positioning, I've got to say, did leave a lot to be desired. I've, yeah. I've got, but again, you know, that bit of luck that we now, we find ourselves clear at the top of that division, that, that, that group, division, yep. Mark, we? we find ourselves clear. And, um, you know, grand scheme of things, uh, yeah, I, I agree with Luke there. We probably should have done. Yeah, but I don't think goal well, difference like, is going to come into this, to be honest with you. And I'm not being I funny. Feel Tibbles, I feel Tibbles wasn't in the greatest of condition by the end of the game last night. I think uh, Le Tible, or whatever he's bloody called nowadays, um, I, I'm not sure if he left via a window last night. Um uh, I don't know if the Italian gentleman that's that's co-commentating with him at the moment would have allowed it. But, you know, at the end of the day, listen, it's another win. It's another yep. goal for Declan Rice. And um, 
I thought Antonio for that goal was absolutely immense. Great, yeah, the, the great control. awareness of his teammates, wasn't it, as well? Yeah. You know, I mean, I've I watched the goal back many times, I've, I've got to say. And the fact that Yarmolenko picked his decision and stuck with it, even though you saw Rice make the run that obviously results in, in him being on the end of the cutback from, from Antonio, hmm. um, or, the, or the square pass from Antonio. It would have been quite easy for Yamalenko to for the, for that to have interrupted his train of thought and tried to play the ball to to Rice as a reverse pass rather than going for the the, the dink over the top that that found um, that found Antonio. So um, props to props to Yamalenko for that. Um, I do think that they um, yeah agreed. I, I do think they they targeted him slightly. Um, he 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 was on the result on the receiving end of a lot of niggly little fouls for whatever reason, and and you know he's not <laughs> he's not our greatest of players yet. He was the one that seemed to have been singled out for a lot of the for a lot of the niggly little tackles that he was on the receiving end of. You know little digs from behind when when the ball was coming into feet. Um, it was it was very very strange to see. And I thought he handled himself quite well, considering he, you know, he didn't retaliate. There was none of that kind of lashing out or anything else. So, um, listen, we've won, we've won again two 0 and um, we we look. As I said to you um, a couple of days ago, Rob, we've got the we, we win the group with three games, three wins mm. away from lifting that trophy. Um, yes, we've got to see that um, what comes out of the Champions League. I'm not quite sure where they land with regards to... get Barcelona. Hey, listen. Mind you, i got to say, i tell you what, I, I'd fancy us to turn them over over two legs. Um, I, I, I admire your enthusiasm, Rob. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to no, you. I'm being serious. I think that... Um, I, you know, listen, they, they ain't great, but they're still Barcelona. Um, they've got some absolutely wonderfully talented players in there. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of um, uh, Ansu Fati. I've got to say, I think the kid's fantastic. Um, but again, you, you take a look and I'd like to think, um, I'd like to think that, you know, we'd give them a run for their, like say, run for their money and, and maybe even take them. Mm. But, you know, who knows? I mean, I think Spurs might be able to give them a run for their money at the minute. Uh, no, that ain't saying a lot, is it? Who, who, did they, who did they play yesterday? It was some team of sort of carpet fitters and, you know, sort of cab drivers, wasn't it? NC, was it NC Mura or um, Mariah? Or, or, Never or, heard of them. Never heard of Yamaha, I bloody know. But listen, again, you can have, like, like we're going to say, Cyber, I'm sorry. I ended up having a grab for dinner with the missus and the kids. I know it's not an excuse, but I do apologise. Um, it, it, what, it's it's a valid excuse to be fair. I think I think you've got to feed your, your family. Yeah, I don't know. I spend all my time with him. Um, Joe's downstairs covering me at the minute. Joe, Joe, Joe. I, I think we will take. I, I think if we had Barcelona over two legs, I think we'd take care of him. I seriously do. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the, the, the amazement of that? Like honestly, like from us, that'd be that'd be something else, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, that'd be oh. something to tell your grandchildren about, wouldn't it? West Ham beat Barcelona at the London Stadium. Woo! Yeah, yeah, I'd take that all day long, all day long. Um, uh, I'm sh I'm sure it was his wife and kids. I'm sure he didn't borrow them. <laughs> Trust me. And even uh, if I lent the mind to someone, they'd think well, I can send them back. Well, she's just set us straight. It wasn't it wasn't the Europa, Europa Conference League. It was uh, the Wickham Sunday Combination League. That's close enough. I, I reckon I could whip up in 11 out of the pub, KC, including you and me. And I reckon we could have got a result last night against Moore. I, really I think we could have, done, could have done better than they did against Spurs, I think. But there you go. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I thought, you know, we didn't need to get out of second gear, really. We we did what we needed to do to get the three points. Yeah. Um, we never had any 
periods. Like I say, Ariola, to be honest, was was pretty much redundant. I thought, however, that he was protected really well by the back four. I thought D. I I personally look at Diop and I think he is starting to look like the player that we saw in the first season. He's starting to look like the player that I believe we should have seen, you know, since that sort of like first season and haven't in yeah. the main, but he's beginning to get back to that. And it it's great because I sort of look and I think, I mean, what is he 24 still? You know, he's, yeah, he's, he's still, still young, mate. Well, he's, pro- not... he's still got his peak years ahead of him, you know, and we've got Ogbonna who's out of contract at the end of this season. And I'm, I would imagine he will probably get off a, a year's extension. I would imagine, but um, Diop yeah. is the next cab off the rank, isn't he? Oh, listen, I, you know, we had the discussion uh, towards the end of the season, last season, Gacy, and I mentioned about um, about the you know, moving him forward mm. into the uh, into the CDM role. Yep. Um, I'm kind of hoping that there is a um, an obligation with Crow if he plays a certain amount of games for us this season certain amount of appearances um, yep. just for the just for the um, the fact that if we've got if we get him here, get him in um, he looks uh, uh, he looks a great talent and I know people are saying that um, he looked a little bit out of his depth I, I really don't think he did when he played against United I thought he was one of the best players on the pitch against United I thought he was him and Dawson were outstanding. Yeah, um, but with regards to Diop, him uh, Andy's just said it there. Um, him and Zuma look like they could be uh, yep. like like it was with um, Dawson and Bonner towards the end of last season. I can see Diop and Zuma creating a um, creating a solid partnership. Um, you know, you could go back to the great partnerships that we've had at the back. And I can see Zuma and Diop creating that for a number of years. Because how old Zuma? Zuma is what, 20, is he 26? 26, 26, 27, something like that. You're looking at a good five years. Yeah. Six-year partnership. 32 is not unheard of for a a centre-back. Let's be fair, John Terry played on for quite a while. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying these boys are, um, you know, John Terry-esque. But if they could play... For another six years, that could be our that could be our six uh, our, our centre back pairing for the next yeah. six years. And I, I agree yeah, with great. what Kent says. Yeah, he, yeah. he is. He he's um he just needs to cut out some of them silly little mistakes that he makes that makes you just go, oh no. Do you know what I mean? But he he is he is a you know he is a cracking player. I mean, what was it? He was um he was captain of Toulouse at twenty. Peach, listen, uh, uh, you know, I, I, it scares me. Um, I'm, I'm loving the fact that Moise is doing what Moise is doing. He's, he's bringing in. They're not, you know, Zoom is not young when you consider what what young he is. Like, the op at 23, 24, I would consider to be a young centre back, yeah. starting to make his way to where he should be. Which, but that doesn't mean that Zoom is old. Do you see? No. He's, he's, but he's not as young. I'm not talking, you know, 21, 22. But Moyes is building uh, the average. The average age of this side is coming down now. Absolutely, significantly coming down. And uh, oh, look at that. So good. That that looks. And do you know what? It could get better at the ne- at the end of the next game. I know I'm sort of going ahead a little bit, but just stop and think about this as a scenario. We beat Genk. Rapid Vienna beat Dinamo Zagreb. We're on nine points, and the other three are, are locked on three points apiece, and we've got three games left. We're almost there. Touching. Well, to be fair, mate, we're touching distance right now. Um, yeah, Genk. Did they win? Was it three 0 They won last night. Or no, they, they beat. beat no, they Dinamo's beat uh, Rapid the first game, didn't they? They beat Rapid. Oh, the Rapid uh, that was one nil, I believe. Yeah, and then they lost. Last night, 2-0? Uh, 3-0, I think. Or was it 3-0 to Zagreb? 3-0, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, can you see us really? Like, I said to you when the draw was made, Gacy, I'd be disappointed if we didn't win all three. 
I'd, I'd be fuming now if we drop points. We're in such yeah. a place now that we, we're looking great. Yeah. Just look at this. This was on the, the one football yeah, lap. Yeah. This was uh, the, the best player results. So just scroll in a little bit. Declan Rice was clear and away. Um, 667 point votes. Saeed Ben Rama was second. I mean, I I think that they it was a pretty close call between those two. I thought they were both outstanding last night. And Mikhail Antonio as well. I think he had a very good game. But I would say it's it was between Declan Rice and Saeed Ben Rama for the for the man of the match. I would probably give it to Declan Rice by an absolute <laughs> hair's breadth. But yeah, I was going to say. That's quite. Yeah, quite a I lot was going to say the other way. To be me. fair, really, I was going to go the other way. Yeah, I was uh, literally. It's such a tight call that you can see it go either way. I know that yeah. is completely different, but yeah. you say Rice by that much. I'm saying the other way. I'm going Yama, but Yama Benny ben Rama. Yeah, by that much. Um, just okay. because, again, the the kids. I said the kid. It's growing in confidence. Like and and that was what he was lacking last year was was game time and confidence. You know, I just think that um, he's going to get better, um, uh, and and I mean significantly better. Um, yeah, look, I have to say he was one of the guys that caught my eye out of the opposition, not because you know he he. When he got the ball, he wanted the ball and he wanted to go with it. And he and he looked like he always wanted to take the ball forward and take people on. Um, yeah. Whether or not he's worth a scout, that would be up to Mr. Moyes and Mr. Newman. Yeah, um, I've got half a dozen sitting in front of me on my laptop of players that I want to see him yeah. um, go out and scout. And um, hopefully we're, we're going to... Once I start doing my, um, my scouting videos, hopefully with the aid of a, a certain gentleman... Um, or lady, I don't actually know who it is, to be honest with you. I've, I have reached out and sent an email today, Mr. Gay, so you'll be interested to know. Um, yeah, if yeah. I can get that person on board, hopefully we're going to start tagging Mr. Newman in the videos that I do. Yeah. So um, hopefully, you know, um, Gay, I showed you Florian Verts, didn't I? He scored did. again last night. He's another 60 million on top of his uh, on, on top of his sale value at the minute. And then obviously... Addy Amy, but I've, I think I've got about 15 to 20 more we need to do videos on, and it'll be, um, yeah, be quite interesting. Yeah. Just look at this. This is our, our run in all competitions. Uh -huh. This does include pre-season friendlies, which I know some people would say, ah, yeah, but okay, if you want to take that to one side, it's entirely up to you. But look at this. This is a 19-game sequence, which includes only one defeat. Now, I would and say that is testament to David Moyes breeding a winning mentality within this group of players. Not just David Moyes, mate, the entire backroom staff. In, in answer to your question, Luke, it is. It's the same guy. Yeah, he was Man City's um, head of... Um, is it head of... He was um, head of recruitment. Recruitment, that's the word I was yeah. looking for. Head yeah. of player recruitment. They don't call it transfers, do they? They're head of transfers or whatever. He was head of player recruitment and, and did a bloody good... Who, who dropped them? What, what the missus dropped their game? He was it's, it's, dinner it's, on the floor or something. No, no, no. My dinner's just there. I've actually stopped eating it because of you all... Well, because of you guys. All you, you I hope, you, I hope you're grateful. It's jerk, chicken and rice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm. I'll tell you what. I've got a little surprise for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, listen. Keep that for the missus. None of us want to see that. I've I've got a couple of interv I've got a couple of guests that have given us interviews. Why is this? Why do I find out about this on here? What are you on about? Because because you're you're uncontactable half the time. You're running around. <laughs> That's because I'm fucking working. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I've actually got not one, not two. Three, count them, three interviews with three fairly notorious West Ham fans that you, you guys will definitely know. One of whom I'm is currently in the live chat. One of whom is currently in the live chat. And all it is, is that each of them, they're five-minute videos, and they just talk about 
their take on last night. Shall I hit play, Duke? Yeah, go on, do it. Let's Does it all allow, it'll allow you to sit back and, and just relax for five minutes. Yeah, I'm good. Go on, let's do it. Let's do it. So joining me to discuss last night's result at London Stadium, West Ham 2, Rapid Vienna nil in the Europa League. Peach, talk to me. Gaty, are you still buzzing? Just a bit. Just a bit. I'm still buzzing. I'm not buzzing off the ciders. I'm buzzing off last night's performance. I thought it was professional. Did, 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 did you find that? Like, we don't have just like a, 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 a starting 11. We have a starting 22. We can we we can rotate intermingle all those players and beat near enough anybody on this earth, man. Yeah, the strong the squad's looking a lot stronger now. Certainly is. Um, certainly is. Let's go on to the game. So it started off, and I was excited, like 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 everybody else was. Um, it, it was a beautiful atmosphere. I heard Rusty B's light show was bananas. Um, the music was good, brilliant. Um, so. You get to the the, the, the the first chance, really, when it um, Declan Rice uh, free kick from Cresswell. Declan Rice put his uh, bonnet on it. Only only hit the post post, didn't it? Post post ain't a word. Post is a word. Only hit the post. And yeah, I was from then. I was like, is it going to be one of those nights? I don't want it to be one of those nights. And then it happened again. Like Cresswell got the free kick to Rice post. Then Cresswell got a corner to Dawson, who I thought just looked like a bully in the air, post. What was your feelings after that? Were you kind of getting a bit worried? I was like, stop hitting the post. <laughs> That's what it, like, yeah. And then, and then, okay, we get the, uh, we get the, uh, it, it was four now, wasn't it, who put the ball into Yarmolenko? Uh, no, Ben Rama, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so Ben Rama, what a ball. That set it all off. Ben Rama put the ball into Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko didn't look half bad, to tell you the truth. He put in a shift. I know he's not everybody's favorite cup, cup of tea. He's kind of like a bit of Marmite with butter on an English muffin. But, hey, he, he, he got the ball straight to Antonio. Antonio, two, three years ago, he would have shot that into Rosette. But he's, he's a different player now. And I think it all started, I think it was against Leicester when we were playing. And it was like Ben Rama to uh, four now, four now to Antonio. Antonio back to four now when everybody thought he was going to have a go at goal. And he did it. And, yeah, so, you know what? Impressed. Um, I'll tell you the, 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 the pass from Antonio to Rice, isn't he everywhere? Like, he was everywhere. Half the world is covered by water. The rest is covered by Declan Rice. And he was everywhere to be seen. Um, a beautiful tapping. Beautiful tapping. And and we, we got a scare when that boy tripped on his own feet from different angles. It did look like, like Ben Johnson did put his leg out. But he never touched the boy. At different yeah. angles, it looked like he did, didn't it? But he never did. It, yeah. it so convincingly, the ref was going to give a penalty, but he didn't. And and bees, there are bees everywhere. <laughs> oh, we're going to beat you on Sunday, bees. But like, yeah, it, 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 it was... Um, what was I saying? 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 About the uh, penalty. Yes, the penalty. It looked like... It looked like he made contact, but he didn't. Homeboy just tripped over his feet. The ref actually thought it was. Looked back, it wasn't. Thank goodness. Then comes what, what like it, it was. It was. It was. It was. It was madness. Bowen had a beautiful ball in from four nows, like a beautiful, beautiful ball. It was like slicing butter, man. Beautiful ball, and he missed a sitter. And then after that, I was like, oh, we need. We have to get one more. Who comes up to the show late to the party? Only Saeed Ben Rama. Ben Rama, da 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 da. He came up, dog. And Bowen should have scored that oppor opportunity when Fournals passed it to him. He didn't. Anyways, we go on. We win 2 0, top of the group. West Ham's living the European dream. That's just what we're doing right now. Bring on your best squad. We'll beat you. Bring on your best squad in the Premier League. We'll beat you. Bring on your best squad in the Europa League. We'll beat you. We're beating everybody. Everybody, Gates. It's a happy time to be a hammer. Yep. Do absolutely. you agree? 
I absolutely do, Peach. I absolutely do. And I'd like to thank you very much indeed for your time on this very short, quick snippet interview. Um, And don't forget, guys, please make sure you subscribe to both West Ham Random and Hammers Fans United on YouTube. Peach, we'll catch you next time. There you go. It was a lovely interview with Peach. That really was. I enjoyed that. That I'll tell you what, just listening to him, I mean, you saw me, Gacy. In the in the in the studio, I did. Second, about half the world is covered in water, and the <laughs> yeah. other half is covered by Declan Rice. That was great. Absolutely outstanding. That was, you know what? I've I've, I've heard a few, you know, the the, the 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 cliches, you know, covering every blade of grass and everything else on the pitch. That man just nailed a new one there. That was that was yeah. absolutely outstanding. I might even have to get that slogan on a t-shirt. That I shit is heard- covered on a t-shirt. I don't know who it was that said it, but it was on one of the Hammers Chats ones. Um, and it, it, I don't know if it might have even been Walshy. I'm not too sure. Um, but someone turned around and said Deckenbauer. Ah! I thought that was beautiful. Listen. I thought, that oh, is listen, I, I, I'm so that I never thought of it. You know, Deckenbauer. Listen, I don't want to have a go at clips because I think the Bass Matty Billy Bonds is amazing. But that's a close second. That's a close second. Then, oh, oh I, think that, that, I, think that's it I think that's it. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I think. No, I, I, listen, everything Clips does is spot on. Um, but I just think that that is absolutely outstanding. I, 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 we're going to have to use that. We're going to have enough. to use that. You're going to have to speak to Charlie, if it was Charlie, have a word, because we're going to need to use I, that. I don't know who, I can't remember who it was. I'll have to watch it back. I, I don't, it might have been Walshy. I'm not too sure. Um, well, if, there listen, was someone if, on that. Um, if Gonzo uses El Fono Cador, all right. I want Charlie's permission to be able to use Declan Bauer because that's how that's, that's brilliant. I'll get, I'll get my, amazing. I'll get my people to speak to his people if you know what I mean. Get, get the lawyers to draw up some of the science <laughs> plans so we don't get caught. Did you there get the is an elephant put in his private chat? Did you I get that did. message to put about yes. Arthur Cabral and mate? I tell you. Woo! I'm looking forward to these videos. That's, that's going to be one of your little nuggets. Um, mm. There is an elephant in the room, Duke. Not in that room. Oh. No. It's a metaphor, darling. Um, okay, no, it's not an elephant. It's a hippo. Don't talk about her like that. She okay. might be watching. She's right there. Um, Nicola Vlasic. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little bit concerned. I'm not panicking. I'm not sort of like berating him from the stands or anything like that. But for a guy that's coming at 30 million quid, there's a certain amount, you know, there's a certain amount that you expect. It was a bit like Ben Rama last season. There was an expectation level when you're coming in for with a 25 million pound price tag. And to be fair, the player doesn't set the price. That's the club's. But when you come in and your club has spent that money on you, there's a certain level of expectation. Don't start. Don't start. Um, I've not really seen it. I've not really seen anything that even comes close to justifying a 30 million price tag. Is he this season, Saeed Benrama? Yes, yes, he is. And and unfortunately, um, he's not going to get any better. And listen, replace, like you said, replace um, replace the word Ben Rama from last season with the word Vlastic for this season. And that is just because, um, again, the team he's saying playing so well, you know, the, the one thing that Jared Bowen lacks right now, and we said it yesterday, Rob, uh, sorry, Thursday, um, Wednesday, Jesus, thank you. Tuesday. I don't even know when we recorded the video. Um, uh, yeah, I think one it was. One of them days, no, it, we, we recorded it Tuesday. It went out Wednesday. Yeah. Um, he's not going to get game time at the minute, Rob. You know, Bowen is Bowen needs a goal. Yep. Other than that, should have done it on eighty-one is, minutes. He should have done. Listen, um, he went the wrong way. Um, he was on. He's on his wrong foot. When he really grand scheme of things, and he was leaning back. Shit happens, you know. Oh, he, no, listen. no, no, wrong foot. He's a professional footballer, mate. No, no, I'm no. Sorry. Listen, listen. Wrong foot. 
You can say you can no. argue all you want. No. Uh, no I, I will. I will. You paid that money. I want you to open a can of beans with your wrong foot. Come on. Well, listen. Uh, wrong foot. Um, that goes in, and he is going to be. Um, he's, he's, he's going to be on fire this season. It didn't, unfortunately. But the problem for Vlasic is he has to break through that wall. Yep. That is Jared Bowen, Pablo Fornells, and so Ben Rama right now. In much the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Steady in Luke. much the same way. Steady Luke. In much the same way. A bear with a sharp stick. There's a there's a bear. Hmm. Um, in much the <laughs> same way, Ben Rama last year, Ben Rama had to break the wall that was for now as Lingard and Bowen. And yep. this year, it's now Vlasic that's got to break the wall that is for now as Ben Rama and Bowen. Um, and he's going to get opportunities. He's going to get opportunities to start because we, it, it doesn't look like we're going out of the cup anytime soon. At Europa League, um, we're going to have at least one more game in, in the League Cup and the FA Cup. So he's he's going to get time to play. He's probably going to get the same sort of time that Ben Rama got last year. Yep. Um, and unless obviously something drastic happens towards the end of the season where he's going to get more game time, he's going to be this year's Ben Rama. Now that being said. Um, I would like to see more of him. I do think he needs to improve quickly. It's a lot of money that we've spent. That being said, it's still £35 million less than United spent on Jadon Sancho, who that's, that for me looks awful right now. Um, I'm sure he'll come good though. At least I'm not doing the same with Vlasic. I'm sure Vlasic will come good. Mm. Not being funny, Sebastian Haller. He's come good, Casey. Well, I was, well, yeah, but he's had to leave for him to come good. I'm, I'm, you know, but he's still come good. Mm. I'm, 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 yeah. I was thinking more Felipe Anderson. Again, Felipe Anderson started mm. well. Well, maybe not against Liverpool, but you get the idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and, you know, so unless something drastic happens with, you know, touch wood, it doesn't. Um, an injury to Bowen, then Rama for Nels, and, and we end up with that juggling situation. He's going to have to make do with bit parts. And he's going to have to make do with what Ben Rama suffered last year. And that's where I kind of hope Ben Rama puts his arm around his shoulder and said, listen, you're in my, you're in my, my yeah. court from last year, mate. So this says, path, yeah. You've just got to... You, you've just got to keep going, Sam. Keep, get your head down and keep working up. Um, you know, Bowen, I mean, Bowen for me deserved an England call-up this time around. I, I don't know what the guys in the chat, the 12 people that are there, um, I don't know whether they agree. Um, I personally think Bowen deserved a call-up ahead of Jaden Sancho. For instance. Maybe not Harvey as a striker. Barnes, maybe not as a striker. <laughs> Harvey Barnes deserved a call-up from Leicester. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go stab my phone in a minute. It's illegal. Give me a second. <laughs> I was Thank say, you. Uh, Sorry. I could play the next interview if you wanted to go and, and educate your son. Beat educate him with the slipper. Edu educate him with the slipper. Do you want me to play the next slipper. interview to give you that I'm opportunity? Gonna watch it. No, no, no. I'm going to watch it. Go on, let's watch the interview. Okay. Next person I've interviewed, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I was very, very pleased to be joined by Mr. Charlie Walsh of Hammers Chat. So joining us to discuss West Ham 2, Rapid Vienna nil last night at London Stadium. Hammers Chat, very own Charlie Walsh. Talk to me. Yeah, I, it's an incredible result in a lot of ways. It wasn't one of those games where everyone was like jumping for joy every second of every moment. Because actually that second half was very... Uh, to steal a phrase, it was very squeaky bum time, right? But that was the thing that sort of made me most happy. Uh, I, I tend to be, in general, quite a calm human being. If you ever watch the watch-alongs, a lot of people in the watch-alongs go, how are you so calm? Because I'm just, I'm, I'm pretty zen. I don't tend to go up and down. But for some reason, these Europa League games have had me just tense aff. I don't, I get, I, you've never seen me so tense, Gacy, honestly. It's actually kind of mad. And that whole second half, it was wild because 
despite them being on top, I just never felt that scared. They just weren't creating what they needed to. Yeah. And because because we've been so good defensively, so compact, so organized. And what what's really makes me happy about it is that's not our first choice team. Last no. season and before that, we have looked very compact at times. We have looked very organized for a lot of it, but it's always because we've got the exact same 11 out on the pitch every single game. And so those people know what they were doing. And whenever someone else would come in, I'd be really concerned about it. There, there was some tension to it, I guess. But here we're playing a, a defense, which is, all second string apart from Aaron Cresswell. You've got a centre-back pairing who barely played together at all. You've got a right-back who hasn't really featured much this season at all. You've got a new goalkeeper, and yet somehow they looked as organised as everyone else did. Yeah, You know, a different double pivot. We had Rice, but we had Noble alongside him. They looked organised. The, the wingers were dropping back. Like, everything just seemed to work. And it's that thing that makes me so happy right now, is that even when we do have to have someone else step in, they still look like they know exactly what they need to do. And that's kind of the beauty of this. That's the beauty of this season. Because before, I was terrified that Europe would wreck us. I really was. Sorry. And I think, don't get me wrong, in the back of my mind, it's only two games, Charlie. Calm down, right? Very, very true. But honestly, I just think everyone in the squad is good enough and knows their job well enough to where if they do need to step in for whatever reason it's not such a significant drop off in ability in tactical awareness and everything else to where it's not going to cause us all manner of problems. Even Antonio, even when Antonio's out, Bowen comes in and I still know if it's not working, it's not for lack of trying because that guy goes and I don't get how he's still going because <laughs> he seems to be running nonstop. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of, yeah. it's just so good to see at the moment. And I kind of don't know what to do with myself. It's that old sort of cliche adage thing about, if you're if you're a good team, you can play badly and still win. Yes. Now that's not to say we played badly last night or in other games where we have won this season. Far from it. I think we've always been all right, but we didn't really get out of second gear yesterday. Didn't we barely to. got out. We didn't exactly. We didn't need to, and that's partly because they weren't the best team we were ever going to face. But that's also partly because we just had it locked down from the beginning. First half we were much better than them. We hit the post twice. We could have scored more. All of that good stuff. Second half all right, try your best, but we're good. We've got this sorted. We've got it locked down. And then Ben Ramos scores at the end. It's just lovely stuff, Gacy. I can't lie to you. I'm just very happy at the moment. We're, playing we're not worried when the penalty football. was awarded. I don't, I don't know if I was worried. I was more disappointed for Ben specifically because yeah. I felt like up until that point, he was having a good game. Yeah. And in my opinion, I think his, his, pro, his progress and career have stalled a little bit over the last sort of six months or whatever. It's, it's just not quite firing like like i'd hoped it would have and part of that is because we have Sufal in there so he's never going to get game time and the other part of it is because ryan fredericks when he has come in has actually looked really flipping good so often more often than not he's got forced out onto the left hand side where he doesn't look as comfortable which is frustrating for him as much for everyone else and so like i was concerned because i was more just like ah you were having such a good game before this that i didn't want it to impact potential selections down the line but even then it got overturned pretty quickly it got overturned pretty quick. And then that was just, there was about a minute or so of me on the chat, just sort of on the watch along, just doing this. But once that was over, we're good. We're grand, you know? Good. It's just good times. You were calm. It's just good times. <laughs> and I will be calm against Brentford. And then the next Europa League game, I'll be bricking it again. But it'll be fine. And of course, if we beat Genk and if Rapid Vienna actually managed to turn over Dinamo Zagreb, they've all got three points. We've got nine, three games to go. We're almost there, aren't we? Win the group, last 16. I mean, look, one win away from quarterfinals. Mate, I, I, look, Gacy, I don't know if you've heard, but apparently we're massive and it just it keeps proving itself to be true every single time. <laughs> Absolutely. Charlie Walsh from Hammers Chat, thanks very much for joining me. No worries. There you go. Thank you very much to Charlie. Um, please, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to Hammers Chat. And consider and consider supporting them by joining their Patreon from I believe it's three pounds sixty a month. Not too bad, and I am one of them. Um, so there you go. I can thoroughly recommend it. Do so here we go. Look at this from Luke Bowen for England. Hmm. We do have a massive pool of players, and Southgate needs eight right backs. Couldn't he, could could Jared Bowen play as a right back? Just sort of like moving back a little bit. <laughs> I reckon he could, but I don't, I don't think he can defend. Minor detail. 
minor detail. We've had we've had many defenders that can't defend that played for England. In all fairness, yeah. I, I, I listen, I, I I think there are so many more players deserving of an England call up based on form in the last four games um, than the ones that have gone. Kane hasn't done enough at club level for me uh, um, to be considered part of the England setup. He's going to be picked because he's England's captain. If he was reputation, then to up. Um, so, you know, that's what I'm at. He hasn't done it. It seems like he's talking about Kane, um, whereas, you know, I was going to say, because you're going all over the show here, mate. It's gone proper Norman Collier. Yeah, I know. Bloody kids. Yes, yeah, so I've, I've got I've got one bar of one bar of internet at the top there. I can see it. Fucking thing. <laughs> Declan Rice, are we running out of superlatives for him? Who? Declan Rice, are we running out of superlatives for him? Who? Declan Rice. Who? Who? Stop it. Stop it. Come, give it to me. Oh, give it to me. God. Come on. Declan Bauer. Declan Bauer. Declan Bauer. Um, okay. Okay. Mate, I, honestly, right? Um, just, just quickly. Yes, Luke. Yes, yes, I did. I, I don't think Kane should have been picked for this squad. Shoot me. Um, I, I grew up watching um, some greats in the middle of the park, Daisy. Um, what you consider to be uh, uh, box to box midfielders. Um, my, one of my, in fact, probably my favourite ever player outside of outside of West Ham is a certain gentleman who played. Sent mid for uh, for the German side, West Germany, in uh, in 1990, um, and then uh, I think he, he played very little in that. But I remember him scoring an absolute banger of a goal, um, USA 94. Um, I don't know if you can still hear me. I'm still going. Um, USA 94 um, against Yugoslavia. Picked the ball up in his own half. Bounded forward. Um, he had it, his, his thighs made my waist look small. USA ninety four. Um, mean Italia ninety, Yugoslavia. No, 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 no. It was against US. It was USA ninety four. In fact, I think they interrupted the game when OJ Did Simpson Yugoslavia went broke, on his broke up by ninety four. No, nope, it was. I'm telling you. Hang on. I'm going to Google this shit because I'm pretty sure. Four one win for West Germany, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it was ninety four. It was Italia ninety. Trust me. Wasn't okay. Arguing with you. <laughs> you got to argue with Google now. I'm arguing with you because it was um, it happened nineteen ninety four World Cup. Here we go. Hang on, I'll be back. <laughs> Hang on. I, I'll tell you now. I'll tell you now. No, it wasn't. Wait, <laughs> not having it. I'm not having it. I've, I've got to search his name now. I'm not having it. I'm telling you, listen. No, <laughs> he's not having it, Luke. He's not having it. I'm not having it. I'm telling you now. <laughs> he's he's gonna he's gonna start writing to Google when he finds out. He's got you got it wrong. No, it was G it might not have been you go slavy then, but hang on, I'm doing something. Hello, <laughs> he's, no God. <laughs> Listen, I haven't I haven't found it yet. Fucking wait a minute. Bunch of bars. <laughs> I believe not. Okay. <laughs> wait a minute. It's, I Are can't find Slavia? it! Because Yugoslavia broke up in before the Euros in ninety two. That was why Denmark got in. We're having a history lesson here, children. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> well, well, she's enjoying it at least. I'm on YouTube. Hang on. All right. Okay. Okay. Everybody's giving you. Uh, clues uh, if I'm honest, I think I'm about to. If I'm honest, I think I'm about to hate my life. That's fine. Because I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty That's certain awesome. it was. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, I'll tell you now I'm bloody certain it was this goal here that I'm about to watch 1990 World Cup yep in Italy um no farm no farm that's the one we got there in the end um yeah all right listen I thought it was 94 my apologies you you were all right I was wrong <laughs> you were hoping it was um, 94 no, I, I, was, oh, mate, I was certain it was 94. I was certain it was 94. Um, he was, he's, he's one of my favourite play, ever players that I've watched. Yeah. He was absolutely yeah. outstanding. Um, I, I say I loved watching him play. Um, yeah. You know, I grew up with him. I, I'm, I'm half German, so, you know, watching that side, watching players like him, Which, oh. you know, absolutely amazing. Michael Carrick, oh, left right, um, the left half. Michael Carrick um, was another player, and Declan Rice is there with. For me, he's there with both of those players. He's there yeah. with a, a Michael Carrick. He's there with a Lothar Matthias. He has, like, I, I will quite happily speak about him in both of those circles. In, you know, against both those players, um, and it's not unjustly so. I, I think that Declan Rice has all the ability to go on and, and probably go beyond both of those players with what he accomplishes. And bearing in mind that Lothar Matthias was one of the great players of his, of his era, of that, of that generation. Um, you know, Declan Rice, if he does, if he, not if he does, when he does, and let's be honest, when he moves to, you know, one of these, one of these sides, that are, you know, City, United, he will go on and he will win trophies galore in his career. He will captain his country at some point in his career and, and he will captain his country for a long time um, because he is that good a player. And I, I, I listen, I don't um, I don't think I'm talking shit when I compare him to someone like Lothar Mateus. Or no, you know, wow. Michael Carrick, who I consider to be one of the most underrated players that has played for this country. Yeah, I mean, you look at that stat there, Duke. Most passes in the final third amongst Premier League central midfielders this season. He's top of that particular list. Yeah, but they're back. Look at the list. Casey, if you believe. No, that no, 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 no. Passes <laughs> into the final third. Oh, you know, right, okay. People are into the, the only final third. No, that's not that's that's it that's, that proves it. it. He's top of the pile. Most is that the salty the Chelsea fan that, that want him but doesn't want him? Uh, may well be, may well be, and most carries into the final third as well amongst Premier League central midfielders this season. Oh, look who's top of that particular pile. Yeah, listen, he. I cannot. Cannot. compare him to anyone else that currently plays. There is no one else that is any better than Declan Rice in his position at his age in the world currently. I'm sorry, and I, if, if there are people out there that disagree with me, come and have a chat and tell me why you think it. I'll tell you why I think it. I, I just think, you know, Declan Rice walks into any team in the world and he either improves them or, or he compliments what they've already got. You know, I think I um, think he is right now. I think he is world class right now. Oh, without that, I don't listen. And is he, Eight games, I think he's got, he's got, four, he's got gold involvement. Yeah, and listen. I, I only think he's going to get better. You know, um, people. I've, I've seen on social media and stuff about um, about Stuchek not being the player he was last season, not being the goal threat. 
No, but that, that's because Declan Rice now is, and Suchek is sitting deeper, allowing yeah. uh, Declan Rice to do what Mateus did against Yugoslavia, to break forward, to make those runs, um, you know, to be on the receiving end of the passes that he normally gives out to others. You know, so we're seeing more goals from Declan Rice this season. Carlos Sanchez, behave yourself, Luke. He was a great player until he injured himself against Macclesfield in the League Cup. <laughs> I was there for that. He could have been it, outstanding as well. It? it was. Grady Dean yeah. Garner was absolutely outstanding in that game. Whatever happened to him? Could have been so different. Still disappointed. I'd love to have seen him being given a fair crack of the whip. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but he's not exactly set the world alight in uh, West Brom. Well, should be out. Come January transfer window, I'd bring him back. How much? Five, five million. <laughs> Listen, what you, what you got to lose by it, though? Not a lot. He's another, he's another English coached player that gives us an extra option in Europe because it gives us a bigger squad in Europe. Well, we've got to meet in Champions League next year when we win the Europa League. You, sir. You, sir. Why not? Dream big. Andy Walsh. Right, Gacy, you take your first. Right. Do I think he can stay at West Ham and win things with us? Yeah, we're winning the Europa League. I've already said. We're winning the Europa League this season. And then we get to the Champions League next season. Why would he move? He said it himself, didn't he? He said it himself in an interview, was it yesterday or Wednesday? When he turned around and said, I believe I can I can achieve all my ambitions here at West Ham. Yeah, uh, listen, sign you've, a you've new got contract, to have belief. Deck. Sign a new contract, please. please. But you've got to have belief. You know, if you don't believe that you're going to achieve something, then you then you won't. It's the old saying that Henry Ford said. If you believe you can or if you believe you can't, either way, you are right. Yeah. So I, if you I don't think believe that. you're going to win something, then guess what? You won't. I, I personally think he's winning something with West Ham this year. Be it the League Cup, be it the FA Cup, be it the, the Europa League, be it the Premier League. Mm. I think he's winning something Best with us this year. Well, this is it. And like I say, and, and I think, where they I were. Think, and... Yeah. See, someone mentioned to me in the, in the bar last night, we were watching the Leicester game. It was, a, it was a Leicester fan that mentioned it to me. He was there watching the game and... I commiserated with him slightly because I, I did. It's shit. Um, I, I turned around and said to him, you know, I, I, about the Leicester side that won the league, and he said, the "Thing is, you're very much like we were. You, you, you guys are very much now where we were then. You're yeah. not the greatest individuals in the world, but as a team unit, you are absolutely fantastic." Lawrence, hope you're well, mate. Welcome. Good old USA, mate. Good lad. Um, Good lad. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think that's what sets us apart at the minute from any of the West Ham sides that have come prior, including the team of 86 and everything else, is that this side right now are, well, much like the side of 85, 86, are playing for each other, not for themselves. There's no, yeah. you know, you look at, you, you look at, you know, the Payette side, the final season at the Bowling. Um, it was it was the Payette show, wasn't it? Let's not mess yeah. around. And it was, it was you know, we're not the same. It was bang game. average, if, if yeah. that, yeah. yeah. You know, um, but it was a case of um, very much like Julian Dick said to Ludek McCloskey when he first signed and Ludo didn't speak a word of English, just give me the ball. Well, that's that was that was the team that was the team mantra when of that final season at the bowling. Give Payette the ball. Yep. Go do off you go. Whereas now there aren't any outstanding individuals with regards to that that skill level that Payette had. You have got Dexter Ben Rahm, as well. Right class. Actually, I don't think he's anywhere there yet. I think he has the ability to be there. I just don't think he's there yet. But he's buying into. This team ethic, he's buying into this this team unit, if you will, and that's it's more about the unit than the individual. And yeah. I think I saw that with Ben Rama last night when he scored the goal and everyone came in, bang on, actually bang on. Um, 
if I take the words yeah. right, and, I, mean, and I've, probably, I've said I used, it before. I used 400 other words to describe yeah. it. I've, I've you said did it in the play. The most, the most successful sporting team is the New Zealand All Blacks. They have, in 120 years of the sport, roughly a 75, 77% win ratio. For a country that has a population of four and a half million, they're usually yeah. world number one or thereabouts. They've won three World Cups. They're a team that all through the years have, have basically taken on all comers and they have a winning record against every test playing rugby nation. Now, yeah. they have, I don't know if anybody's ever read the book. I, th I think it's called Legacy, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, really good book. And it goes real deep into why this team on the, you know, on the edge of the earth excels in such a brutal, brutal sport. And yet they've got a population that's half the size of London. How do they do it? One of the, the little rules that they have, and I'm sorry, it's slightly crude, no dickheads. No dickheads. They have a rule that says, don't matter what you are in terms of your skill set, what you're doing for your provincial team, what you're doing for your team in super rugby, whatever. If you are what is perceived as a dickhead by the New Zealand rugby team, uh, you know, the sort of like the, the, the management structure, you ain't you ain't getting anywhere near an all black jersey. You are not representing the greatest team in sporting history. You're not getting near it because they will pick just as much on your characteristics, who you are, what you are inside, and what, you know as as to what you do on the rugby pitch. And that's exactly what we've got here. We've got a situation where any dickheads by now, Moyes has pretty much weeded out. He's got rid. <laughs> Done. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what my point. Yeah, he's he's bringing people in, and it's it's the old thing, isn't it? You know, you you either change the people, or you change the people. Yeah, you yeah. either change their mentality, or you get them well, out you, the door and get someone in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and that's, that's, what's what, going and that's on. essentially, you know, essentially that's what he's done. Um, with with regards to um, you know you look at the likes of Felipe Anderson, you look at the likes of Sebastian Haller. Listen, they didn't fit. Whatever it was that they were doing didn't fit right. Off you go. Yep. Take See it. Ya. Don't you know, the door, the door, like door, way out. And he's you know and and I think that's the same to be said now with with the whole um, Jesse Lingard situation. Mm. You know he's kind of realised you know what. We we did Jesse a favour. Let's not back no. about. We did Jesse a favour by allowing him to showcase what he can do. We we got him. We got him back into the England squad by giving him game time. I'm not saying 50, that he 50, didn't. I think wasn't it? No, I was going to say I was. He wouldn't have got back in there if we didn't take him on loan. That is true. That is true. Okay. So the first the, the first big step for him getting back in the England squad was was him coming to West Ham. And yeah. giving him the game time he needed. Okay, seventy-five percent being we gave him the opportunity to play and got him getting back in the England squad. The other twenty-five percent was him taking that chance and, and and you know playing well. Yeah. But then Moises realised, you know, do you want to come back and play? Nah. Fuck off then. That's yeah. it. That's it. And that's um, as I said to you before on other on other videos, Gacy. Um, it's one question, is it? Do you want to come back? Yes or no? There's no... Nah, nah, nah. The second he goes... Nah, 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 uh, uh, door shut. Bang. Yeah. It's a yes or no out. answer. We'll move on. And I think that's why we have and got Vlasic. And, uh, you mm. know, again, it's a lot of money. But again, time to bed. And I know people say, well, for that money, you can give me your left foot, right foot, weak foot, strong... Yeah. It's got to be given the chance. Yeah, you know Ben Rama wasn't given the chance last season because he had to break that wall down. Vlasic has got to do the same. I just hope he perseveres with it. He did last year, Andy. He did last year. Possibly and then he turned his back on it by him. saying, "Listen, he came in, he did a job, and I'm not knocking him for that, and I'm grateful because he helped us get into Europe." What <laughs> pisses me off is the fact that. Um, you know, Moyes went to him, do you want to come back? And he ummed an ard. And it was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, it should yeah. have been, yeah. Not being funny. He's played his best football under us. 
Oh, without a doubt. And, you know, it, it, what's, he, what's he played at United so far this season? Probably less than, probably 100 minutes in probably grand total, less like than 100 that. minutes. Yeah. You know, whereas he would have played near enough every single game we've had so far this season. He'd probably played every minute of every match, pretty much. You know, that's his so. choice. That's his choice. He's made that bed, now go lie in it. Listen, if we go back in for him on loan in, in January or, or a permanent transfer, part of me will be pissed off that we're going back in for someone who's already said no to us once. I, mm. I will be slightly pissed off with that. Um, let's, you know, let's cut, cut the tyres, let's blow that bridge up, let's not go back over it again. It's not going back with an ex-girlfriend, is it? Let's not do that. Let's move on. Let's go forward. That That's over now. That was last season, and I'd like to think now. And I'll tell you what, Luke, I want him. This could start, want start a discussion amongst you two. I, I sense that Luke wouldn't be too keen. I want him. I wouldn't pay for... Listen, he was a £35 million player when he joined United for what he was doing at uh, was it Ajax, wasn't it? He was a thirty. Listen, he was a thirty-five million pound player when they got him. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's now been left to rot. If I, I, I would have taken a punt and getting him on loan, rather than getting Alex Crow on loan. Personally. Really? What? What was the? What would be the reason behind that, in your opinion? Um, very much like Lingard last year, mate. What's, what's, he, what's he doing at United at the minute, apart from sitting there putting his thumbs and rotting on a bench? Through. He's an outstanding player. He's an outstanding mm. talent. He fits the Moyes mantra. If you look at what he did for Ajax, he fits that Moyes mantra. That he, the, yeah. the work rate for the team, not for himself. Yes, It's about a team thing for him. He came out of Ajax that that's what they're known for. Oh yeah, you know I would have been all over that for a loan deal personally, and I'd I'd still be maybe all over that for a loan deal in January because it's a domestic loan deal. And I I'm going to make myself unpopular with Luke, and I'm going to say I agree with you. I think I he's, think he's, I think he's a tremendous player that is wasted at Manchester United. I think you know he's come through at Ajax, you know, so in his DNA he he's got a footballing brain. You come through. Oh, well, you that, come that. through the academy at Ajax. You have got something about you that has been bred into you. Otherwise, you don't come through at Ajax. Period. Okay. Um, he's got European experience. He's got international experience. He's now got Premier League experience. Yes. Okay. It hasn't gone so great for him, but he'll have a point to prove. He'll want to prove I am that good. Right. I think if you can get a team that will be that will complement him and he can complement the team, which hasn't happened at Manchester United for whatever reason, I think you've got a player there. I really do. You look at the other players that have come out of that Ajax side. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I take I take mm. Luke's point there. Sort of like, don't understand why Sire play, Sire play and never play. I guess the thing, though, is that, that Luke, you know, Manchester United are a team that can spend 35 million quid on a midfielder and leave him on the bench more often than not. Yeah, yeah, uh, I just, but yeah, yeah, but that's Andy, you're right. You know, he's on a downward slope because he's at United. You know, Jesse Lingard fell further back down the pecking order when they signed Ronaldo, and he must have been mm. kicking himself, must have been kicking himself because he knew then he slid further down. Donny yeah. Vanderbeek must have been going, What have I got to do? You know, well, now I'm further back. Now he's further back down because he's behind Pogba, Fernandez. You know, all of those, all of those other forward players. Fred gets in in front of him. That I don't understand. <laughs> you know, you know, you're in trouble when Fred's getting in ahead of you. Um, that's I've the worst. One. That's the, Fred is the worst Brazilian, other than trying to go down the, the local barbers and have a like. Honestly. <laughs> A cheap one using using pound land waxing strips, right? Oh. He's the work. Honestly, I've had them. I had my chest oh. done with a pound land waxing strips. They are uh, that. That's, you know what? He's the, honestly. Do you know what I don't get? And uh, maybe it's because I'm a blokey bloke. I'm a bit old school, right? Hammers Chat's got a new, new new sponsor in Manscaped. All oh, this, yeah. this fascination of trimming your balls. I'm like, am I? Am, am, what's going on? 
Men are not listen, men. If I, listen, if I listen, if I don't catch, if I don't catch it, right? If I don't, if I don't catch that fucking at garden edge as I'm pulling up my underpants, and then I'm going gosh, or or zip up half a dozen of them when I'm putting my zip up, there's no point. It's listen, Love that's a buzz, right? Love you know, I'll, I'll tell you what I was watching the other day, Game of Thrones. For those of you who haven't seen it, I'm going to ruin I've nothing. I've never seen an episode. Never and he's, seen a and he's, shaved, he's, 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 he's shaving his boyfriend with a knife on the old chest, right? And he, lifts, he makes him lift up his arm mitts because he's going to do the old pits. And he goes, well, you want it all off? And he goes, yes, I want you completely bald. And then he looks at his groin and I'm like, no. Uh oh, yeah. See, everyone goes on about whack, back, sack and, back, sack and crack. Right, having a whack. My, my, my concern, and listen, it's a football channel, I know, but waxing strip on the uh, on the old on the old sack, pull it on the twins. But then what happens if you tear it and they end up dropping out and rolling across the floor like a pair of marbles? I ain't chasing me bollocks down the road. Have you ever heard of a, of a, a rugby? No, mate. I'm you telling you, have you ever heard, you ever heard of a rugby cream. player called Wayne Buck Shelford? Yes. You heard, you heard that story about his nuts getting his ball bag getting ripped open in a rugby game, and he played on. He played on. He didn't even know it had happened. Listen, hard listen. Moment. Let me tell you a story. Just a quick one. I'm mentioning no names. Yep. Husband, wife comes home. Oh, no. It's happened locally by the Belvedere, by the way, and I know this because it's. Oh, this isn't like the old Lorena Bobbit back in the day, is it? No, this is family. Husband in bed with some other bird. Oh, no. Wife comes home. Oh, finds no. Finds him naked. Grabs him. <laughs> squeezes. And pops one. Oh! Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Duke. Duke, it's not nine o'clock yet. No. What are you doing to me? <laughs> Hot oh. Popped one of the twins. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Wow. That is. I, I don't know. Is that worse than? Is, is that is that worse than the than the rugby player getting his ball? Mate, bag I can you imagine the feeling of that. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe no. we should maybe we should um maybe we should sort of harness that one, Luke. Maybe that's how we Listen, need to go. Just I just want to quickly cover one more thing, right? Go for you it. think it hurts. You think it hurts when you sit down and you catch you, you catch one and you kind of sit on it or crush it between your thighs. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah, that's not nice. Can you imagine that hurts? Can you imagine that, that? Mm. anyway, oh. move on. I've got one what more interview. I was just saying <laughs> He's a friend of Hitler's. Um, <laughs> so it's can we move on to the other interview, please? The other, well, if I, I can't if do I this was, anymore. If I was to say to you, <laughs> tell, tell me the most famous... You shouldn't have been West having this talk before. <laughs> tell me the most ma famous West Ham YouTuber aged around about 14 roaming around Somerset. Who would you think of? I'd say he has a name that had a napple named after her. You might be right. You might be right. I might well, have, family. I might... His family are just a brand of apples. Yeah, yeah. Shall I play it? Let's do it. Mr. Probably Jake not Pops the best from... thing that we've done, spoke about before, and we go into a youngster's future anyway. I, I asked his dad permission first of all. There was nothing untoward. I asked his dad permission first. <laughs> this was slight this was a slightly different format because I didn't actually sort of like introduce him and whatever. He just sent me over a video very kindly in his own time because it's very he's busy for him on a Friday. He's a he's a really good lad and he, he came came up trumps for us. Mr. Jake Cox from West Ham Unofficial. If you guys haven't subscribed, rectify that mistake immediately. Get yourselves over there, hit the subscribe button. And get this young lad. I think he's on the road to two thousand. We're on the road to a thousand. We're he's on the road to two thousand. So let's let's get him there a bit quicker. Anyway, Mr. Jake Cox from West Ham Unofficial. 
Hi guys, Jake from West Ham Unofficial doing a little match review for Gatesy for the uh, West Ham United 2 Rapid Vienna Neil game. Apologies for the setting, it's not my normal setup. Uh, it's been it's been a busy day, so I'll just film this quickly for Gatesy. Now, in terms of the game, professionally, we got over the line. I thought really, really, really well uh, played. I don't think we'd have third gear, to be honest. Third gear at a push. Uh, you know, we didn't have we didn't have our strongest team out, as we expected. And professionally, we got the job done. Job done. In terms of the starting lineup, I was uh, I was slightly, sli slightly surprised to, to see the lack of involvement of Alex Crow and to see the involvement of Declan Rice in midfield. But, you know, Declan Rice keeps on playing and he keeps on playing well. So I can see why David Moyes is saying, why do I drop him for any game? So, uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that surprised me in a way. Of course, Ariola started in goal, which I was happy with. Diop and Dawson, it's a very good... Very good uh, partnership for the Europa League and domestic cup games. It just it just tells you know the those two haven't put a foot wrong so far um, and so far this season. And you know it's a it's a good it's a good little uh, li little back burner for David Moyes. You know whenever it's called on, those two can do the job. Uh, Ben Johnson at right back. Hmm. He was okay. He 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 wasn't he wasn't groundbreakingly fantastic, and he wasn't pathetically awful. But he was just somewhere in the middle. He made a few good runs. He defended okay. He was caught out a couple of times, and who would have thought it? Andre Yarmolenko covered um um covered in defensively. I I did not think I would be saying that after the game. But uh but yeah, he had an okay game. Nothing to really go to David Moyes. This man's got to start. But uh yeah, midfield noble noble and uh, uh noble and rice. Noble played okay, got his foot in as he always does. Rice, absolutely fantastic man of the match, of course, you know doing his doing his normal job picking up the ball driving forward breaking up play nicking the ball and of course what topped his performance off was that goal in terms of the goal it was a well worked one definitely uh, all I've got to say about it is uh, Yarmolenko Antonio Rice goal a very good team well worked goal and uh, deserved to go 1-0 up uh, going into half time other players that I do want to discuss Saeed Benrahma of course got on the score sheet towards uh, the end in the last couple of minutes of the game to just really finish things off which uh, which was thoroughly well deserved as well because he had a fantastic game he never stopped running you can tell you can tell that he's now a uh, David Moyes player because he puts in he puts in every single uh, bit of what he's got and uh, he leaves it all on the pitch that is for sure Nikola Vlasic hmm he hasn't, I mean, the 20 minutes he came on against Southampton, he impressed me. He looked fiery, he looked really good. Apart from that, those 20 minutes, he hasn't done any, done anything to shout about. I thought this was a big game for him, and he was pulled off on the 60th to 70th minute, I do believe. Mm, yeah, not not fantastic. In, in the first half hour, I don't think he even touched the ball many times, and I'm not, and, I, and I'm not even kidding. I didn't even notice he was on the pitch at times, but, you know... He will adapt. He reminds me of Saeed Benrahma when he joins, so hopefully he's going to follow Saeed Benrahma's footsteps and become a very good player for West Ham. Andre Yarmolenko, I'm eating my words and eating a bit of humble pie here because, uh, you know, credit where credit's due, he was good. Defensively, he surprised me. He covered for Ben Johnson when Ben Johnson was, you know, all over the place. Attacking-wise, attacking, attacking wise, you know, he played that fantastic ball that, uh, that, got, that got us the breakthrough over, over the top to Antonio. That was that was really effective in the game. Down that right-hand side, whether it was Johnson or whether it was uh, whether it was Yarmolenko, just down that right-hand side, just bending it round. And, uh, you know, Antonio beaten for pace and uh, and, and physicality. And, of course, won, won it every single time and, you know, put some put some, put some some dangerous balls into the box. So that was our, you know, we had Saeed Benrahma. That's all, that's all you've got to say for the left side. Then you've got them dangerous balls coming around the right-hand side, uh, which was which was good. Yeah, overall, on a whole, the one thing I haven't discussed, though, is the penalty. Um, when I saw that in full time straight away, I thought, Johnson, what are you doing? That's a stupid challenge. I'm still not quite sure what he was doing and what his intentions were by just sticking his foot out there and having a prod but you know he didn't touch him and VAR came in to be fair I didn't even think VAR was uh, was in play but thankfully it was in play to overturn the decision as I said thankfully VAR did its job correctly and got it overturned Rapid Vienna I wasn't really impressed with at all um, you could tell they were a team out of form but there we go that's my match review thank you very much for Gatesy make sure you drop a like on the video for Gatesy and subscribe to Forge Reminds subscribe to West Ham on a it 
came to a bit of an abrupt end for reasons that I have no idea. That's what I received in the post. There you go. But I thank you, Jay. He's a good lad, isn't he? That one. He, he is. He's. A, he's. He's got. He's got a good heart. And uh, as I say, I sent his dad a message. I said, "Do you think he would?" Initially, Richard was like, "Oh yeah, 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 he'd be up for that." And he was like, "Ah, uh, hang on a minute. He, I've just remembered he's got such and such on." But he still managed to find time in his busy schedule because he, he had his own stream to do at half six. So he'd have been buzzing around getting things ready and prepped and all the rest of it, as well as his other commitments. And he still managed to find time to set, put that together and send it over to us. So, Jake, if you're watching, really do appreciate it, mate. And uh, any of you guys, as I say, that haven't subscribed, make sure you uh, rectify that error force with. Just going through some of the comments here, um, Duke. Um, I love Yamo and Vlasic will come good 100%. I hope you're right, Walshy, because as I say, we've we've spent an awful lot of money on the guy. Yeah, uh, that, that, that I don't like. I, I don't just listen. I, for a guy that's played, I think about, about 90 minutes of football all season up until the game he played last night. Um, I... I, I Percy thought that um, Ben Ben Johnson had a, uh, a, a he, he was he, you know if I was to give him a rating of seven I don't think he was disappointing I, I, I don't think I he think was outstanding was I think he did a job in there yeah I mean we've all got our yeah, own I think opinions he did a job and, in and Larry I. I respect your opinion, um, but respectfully, I do disagree. I, I think he had a decent game. I, I think he was a 7 out of 10, same as Duke. But listen, everybody sees things different way. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying we're right. I'm just saying it's, you know, we, we look at it from different angles, but not a problem. That's that's what this is all about, isn't it, Duke? You know, we can sort of sit here and it we can say, indeed. even you and me. Thought. Exactly. I mean, even you and me don't yeah. agree on everything, do we? So, Noble was killing all momentum. That's... Um, I can understand what you're saying. There was one passage of play where he had the ball in midfield and you're thinking, come on, release it, release it. And you could see the player sort of like was, was closing him down. And you're like, no, just come on, just get rid of it. And he got robbed. And yeah, I mean, he got away with it, fortunately. But um, I, I don't think it was one of Noble's best games, in fairness. I, I don't, again, I, I'm inclined to disagree. I don't think okay. he had a bad game. I don't think he was outstanding, but again, I don't. You're right. He did. He did slow down play, um, but again, I felt he slowed down play in the right points. It wasn't. Again, I, I can't. Again, my opinion. I can't agree with Luke there. Luke's opinion. He's yep. entitled to that. I just think that, um, you know, I don't think he was bad. You know, I, I, I'd probably give. I'll tell you what, do you want to do the player ratings? Do you fancy it? Have you got time? Have you... Um, I, I really haven't. I've just received the message saying, where are you? So... <laughs> you need to go. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up there, mate. So, That's not a problem. Um, no, look, um, unless I'm not saying I'm right, I'm not saying I'm wrong, you know? Let's not start that no, but, shit again, so come on. But, but Luke, Luke always not says he's right. Even when he's wrong, he says he's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Larry says he's a big Johnson fan Didn't see it yesterday He's given him a five mm. ah. Harsh as I, say. I, I think he was a seven You say he was a five I'll tell you what Larry Let's split the difference Let's say it was a six Yeah Let's say it was a six Let's, good. let's meet in the middle Let's meet in the middle Make love not war <laughs> Not Not here Not here Not here and it's not, with not even nine o'clock, but you'd be out. <laughs> Listen, Duke, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, guys, thank you. All you live chat gremlins, thanks for joining us. Please, please, please don't forget, if you haven't done it already, make sure you copy and paste this banner, which is in the description below on YouTube and Facebook. Put it onto your social media platforms. This is obviously for Isla. Um, she still needs help. Her family still need help. The Just Giving link changed about a week or so ago, so I draw that to your attention. But fundamentally, this girl is still in need of assistance. This family is still in need of assistance. Um, just put it onto your social media platforms. Keep the momentum going behind this campaign, guys. It's still ongoing. Um, if you're in a position to put any money in this particular fighting fund, the Just Giving link is there. No donation is too small. Please give generously, and I thank you, as always, 
for listening. And as usual, I've got a load of comments that have come through. I've, I, I need to sort of just have a look. Larry said it is a six. We've 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 agreed. Six. There you go. Negotiation. Um, Johnson just. Do you know what I? Th I think it's a confidence thing, and I think it hasn't been helped by the fact that he. Um, He's been played at left back, central midfield and anywhere but right back until last night. But there you go. Uh, Fury going to win. I take it you're on about Fury, Deontay Wild. Of course he is. Of course he is. He's beat him twice. I know. That's one tomorrow was morning. No, it's next week, isn't oh, it? Yeah, it was a Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, he's beat him twice. I'll and the first time he beat you. him, although it was a draw, let's face it, it was a Tyson Fury that was that was coming back from being 28 stone and being out of the ring for two years and, and, and depression and attempting suicide. He laid him on the floor else. in the last fight and he sat up like Undertaker, didn't he? Sat up like the Undertaker and won the rest of that round. Oh, he was... He, so. Listen, it, it, smashed, it smashed the other two that fought last week um, around the ring just because he can. Um, he's yeah. not frightened. Tyson Fury isn't a frightened of getting hit, um, and he knows that if he lands the right punch, he's going to win. Joshua last week looked scared to look scared to take a punch, and I don't because think of he that, knows what he is anymore. Land. I don't think so he knows what he is anymore. I think I think George Foreman said it. He doesn't. He used to be a seek and destroy fighter, and now he's not too sure what he is. I think the Ruiz de <coughs> defeat. Although he obviously came Big back punch. from that, I do think that the Ruiz defeat has kind of made him question who he is. And once yeah, you're yeah. questioning yourself, you're in all sorts of trouble as a boxer. Um, anyway, we're talking boxing now. We're, this is a football channel in, in, in truth, so we should probably continue this afterwards. Are you but... aware of what we were talking about earlier? No. Nope. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Fury would use his size unlike Joshua did. Completely agree. I think I think he, that was a massive error on on Joshua's part that he didn't use his size to rough him up. He was out of six strength. Yeah, he was out boxed. He was out thought. He was out fought. He was out worked. Done. But uh, anyway, uh, correct, Larry. Correct. <laughs> right, we're going to wrap it up there, guys. As usual, please don't forget. Drop a like on the stream. It really does help the channel out tremendously. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure you... What do they do with the, the bell there, Duke? Don't squeeze it. Don't squeeze <laughs> it. Certainly don't squeeze it. Don't <laughs> <the laughs> squeeze anything. Jesus. Don't. A good grip, but not... A, not anyway, enough. Just a, a little Just... gentle shake. Just... <laughs> a, a, a slight agitation the of the bell. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, more and, than two shakes, you end up in a whole different realm. So, <laughs> and in a please. public toilet, don't more than two shakes. That's it. And please don't forget, guys, any of you guys that have got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, social media platforms, do us a favor. Take the, the link from this, from YouTube, from this stream, put it on your social media platforms. And no, you never please, know, don't. We spoke about don't popping do it. Come on. We're trying to get to a thousand subs. For goodness <laughs> sake. This is how we're this is how no, it is. At all. But then but then everyone everyone that joins would expect us to talk about, you know squeezing testicles. Uh, you know. We could get a bunch of say the massive masochists rock up. I don't know. We're all in that boat, aren't we? Yeah, that's true. We all right. we all like being inflicted with pain over the last twenty years, for God's sake. Shall I hit end credits in a minute? Why not? What it's are nice, we doing? Um we're fucking massive. We and are. we just keep going. We're going to keep going. Unstoppable momentum, ladies and gentlemen, just like our beloved West Ham. Come on, you Come are. You are.